Hello, everybody. I am Laura. Uh, I'm going to be presenting our work for the satellite task. Uh, this is a joint work with Alessandro, who's sitting there, and uh, Harold and Paolo. I, I'm going to skip all the motivation and so on, and I'm going to start talking about the different runs that we did and how we approached them. Uh, I will start with the metadata. For, for the metadata, the first thing we did, you know that we had uh, several fields from the, from the Twitter API. And the first thing we did was see if there was uh, any missing data, any fields that we were had like 70% of the data missing, and we skipped those. Uh, from the remaining ones, we looked if there was any correlation between each individual field and the evidence of fraud or road possibility. And we finally only kept the original language of the tweet, uh, the number of retweets and the number of favorited, uh, the number of times it was favorited. Uh, then for the text, uh, we also did uh, some uh, the remote stop words. Uh, we translated all the tweets into English. Uh, also some lemmatization, tokenization, removed URLs and emojis. And then we used uh, a bidirectional LSTM to process the uh, text using a word embedding. And finally, we, um, we concatenated the, the features from the LSTM together with the normalized features from the other uh, items that we were considering. And we used uh, a double-ended uh, neural network. So that means we used a fully connected for, for the evidence detection and a another fully connected for the road possibility detection. And we trained this in parallel. We had seen in other um, papers that they were saying that when you train, uh, when you train a network on two tasks at the same time, which are kind of related, that helps uh, one task and another. So we thought that this approach, since both tasks are quite related, could benefit both uh, tasks. Then, for the visual part, uh, we took the Inception V3 network, uh, pre-trained on ImageNet. We freeze the the first layers of the network and only train the other, uh, the last 50 layers. And, uh, and then we did the same, the, the same approach with uh, two fully connected layers in parallel training on both tasks. And um, we also thought that this task was pretty similar to a one class classification problem. Um, and I'll explain the difference. So um, a binary classification is normally when you have two different tasks, uh, two different classes which are clearly defined, like uh, you want to classify between dogs and cats. Uh, while one class classification is when you have one class which is clearly defined like floods, and the other class is just anything else. So we saw a paper on that uh, matter that we're proposing a, a compactness loss, uh, which is basically for the task that you have defined, you try to make the features, the visual features, as closely as possible so that it's easier to cluster. So, um, so we implemented that uh, compact loss to uh, to try to also improve the results. Um, as a second approach for for the visual part, we decided to um, to test if our hypothesis of training both tasks at the same time was true, and we trained uh, both tasks separately. And uh, in order to enhance it a little bit, we we trained it with uh, a bunch of different. Uh, uh, neural networks, and then we did uh, uh, we did uh, average. So we take the average of the softmax from all the different uh, networks, and we <coughs> use a 0 0.5 threshold to um, to classify them. And we uh, we tried a second approach for for the aggregation, which was uh, combining the the average of the softmax uh, together with the majority voting. Finally, for uh, using the metadata with the visual information, uh, we took the first the approach that we used for the metadata together with the first approach that I talked about for the visual information, uh, and uh, we combined them. Uh, we concatenated the features and then did again the same uh, two fully connected layers uh, and trained both tasks uh, simultaneously. And now about the results. When we started to train, especially with the metadata, we were uh, a little bit upset because we were not getting very good results in our uh, validation set. 
and uh, I started looking at the uh, at the uh, at the data myself, and I realized like that uh, it was quite a difficult problem. And uh, I was wondering, is it is it really that we are not doing what we are supposed to do, or is it that just the problem is too difficult? So um, we took uh, four uh, four volunteers uh, to. Um, to do some manual annotation on the training set, and they am annotated uh, 50 images. Just, uh, just first of all, just using the metadata, and then using the metadata, the visual information. And we realized that uh, even human annotators uh, were not getting very good results using the metadata. So um, we we didn't go any, we didn't push push that any farther. And uh, for the visual information. Uh, they were they were quite good at classifying thought, uh, not so good at classifying um, uh, evidence of possibility in roads. Uh, as you can see here, in the we have the results for the uh, for the image only. Uh, we have three results because we have the three methods that w that I explained before: the one using uh, the parallel training, uh, the one using separate training uh, with uh, the average uh, of the softmax, and the one using the average of the softmax and, um, and the majority voting. Uh, as you can see, both uh, all of them are quite similar, uh, also quite close to the human annotation. Uh, even the last one gets slightly better results. Um, then for the, for the possibility of roads, uh, we realized that we did poorly when we tried to train both things at the same time. We believe that it's because one task was much easier than the other and the and the network was kind of um, lazy and just uh, trained one uh, the easiest task, uh, and w uh, we get a huge improvement when we train both things separately, and uh, we even do better than humans. Uh, well, we think it's because um, the our uh, annotators they did not have any examples to to s to look at from the from the training data. So they don't did not quite understand the criteria that people were using to to classify the possibility of roads, while the network had the whole training set to to train. Um, and while when merging the metadata and the image, since we were not doing so great with the metadata, this kind of worsened the the results, uh, and especially for for the flood, also because we were using again the training uh, both things at the same time. Uh, so yes, yeah, so, uh, some uh, conclusions. I would say that uh, as the manual annotation shows that the metadata is uh, not very discriminative. Um, uh, the the visual uh, applications were were the ones that gave better results, especially for the evidence, and um, and yeah, and combining the metadata and the images was uh, not really improving too much. Thank you very much, and if you have any questions.